Hello, 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 and welcome back to The Hunt, i.e. Monster Hunter uh, Portable 3rd. Well, last, where last we left off, I had been clearing out these uh, multiple star quests, and uh, we had... Oh, I keep saying four, but actually it's four stars are done. We're on a five-star quest, and uh, I had upgraded the uh, hot springs and the pool, hot springs and the drinks bar a little bit, and uh, we're ready to start killing shit. Um... I would like to show you guys possibly one of the harder mo monster, not the hardest, but one of the harder monster fights today, the Nargakuga. Before I do, I uh, looked into it to remind myself, and here's the deal. See these two? These are quest givers. Hi. The pink one does low rank uh, quests uh, from HR 1, 2, and 3, the hunter ranks, which you will notice are very familiar. Kill a great jaggy, deliver mushrooms, kill a barith. Ludroth, Rogi, familiar at all? These are the same quests that I've been doing, but the reward is much higher because these are online versions of the quests. They're also at 3-star level, so apart from dealing with uh, relatively strong enemies, they're also intended for a party size of 4 instead of party size of 1, which is obviously the size that a solo player like me will have to play at. However, in order to reach the high rank monsters and get high rank equipment, I need to be able to clear these quests. And let's be fair here, I'm at the point that I'm killing the low rank offline stuff in 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, and I have a 50 minute window to complete quests in. Ergo, I may yet be able to complete those fights, assuming the monsters have less than 10 times as much health. But that's for the future. For the moment, I'm going to focus on the offline content and clear all the way through 6, specifically because it'll be easier to farm low rank equipments off of them that I can then use for weapon and, and armor crafty that will make it that much easier to uh, advance. Usurper's fire, Usurper's fire Bolt will require Zenogre kills, including tackling his head, which is going to be tricky at best to do. A true Yukomo Saber, while technically a damage upgrade and a green upgrade, only requires Dragonite Ore, which I should be able to farm in the Volcano. We will probably go with the true, the true Yukomo Saber route uh, before we go the uh, the Dragon Upgrade, or the thun Thunder Upgrade. Okay, but that's, uh, that's uh, a problem for tomorrow. Uh, for now, let us do something that we have uh, long been overdue for between all the other quests that I've done in the meantime. Let's move on up to the 5 star tier. Uh, I don't remember what kind of drinks I'm going to need, so let's see what quest I get. Got hot drinks. The Narga Kuga. Excellent fight. Uh, it's apparently going to be in the flooded forest uh, against the panther-like creature. The Barrieth would be a cold fight against him. Uragon would be a fire fight. Rathalos fire. Well, you know, let's, let's take a quick look at my resistances and decide accordingly. Weakest to ice, neutral to pretty much everything else. Let's kill the Rathalos. So, I have a couple cold drinks, so get a few more. The Rathalos is also a strong enough enemy that, uh... May be worth having some... Oh, screw it, just take some Psycho Serums and go. If I actually lose to him, I'll worry about what I need in order to win. There's not much to say with regard to the Rathalos. Uh, you've seen me fight the Rathian, which is the ground dragon. He's in zone 8. Cool. Uh, well, the Rathalos, by comparison, would be more of the air dragon, the lord of the air, the skies. He spends... if the Rathian spends 20%, 30% of its time in the air, the Rathalos spends 70%, making it a lot harder to really pin down and kill as a result. 
I went the wrong way, didn't I? Yes, I did. As you all know, I like going 1-3 and then 5 for the mining points. Pretty sure I can pick up Dragonite War off of Volcano nodes as well. Which is what I need for the next sword upgrade. Incidentally, playing the high rank quests uh, gives you high rank rewards. So the mining nodes give better stuff. The, uh, the materials. Oh, forgot to drink my hot drink. The construction materials that you. The crafting materials, sorry, that you get off of the monsters are all different and allow you to construct weapons with sharpness that far exceeds uh, just green, which is kind of where I've been at offline. And the reason I keep saying online, online, offline, offline is because these, when I, if you were using a actual PSP and you actually had the internet hooked up and everything, you could totally play with your friends and get a party together. Which is something which, to date, I don't think I've ever been able to do when playing hundreds and hundreds of hours. Well, hundreds, not plural hundreds. Of Monster Hunter. Anyway. Enough to chat. Enjoy the Ruffalos. seriously hope that I picked up the lucky cat. I did, okay good. That way I will get extra parts when I win this fight. I should say if, but come on, we, we all know I'm gonna win. Can't go for the tail. When he's in the air, the tail is exposed. When he's on the ground, it's not. Still, it takes a lot of stamina for him to stay in the air as often as he does, so... I may just take advantage of him when he goes to restore stamina. Where'd he go? Oh, look at the minimap. He's literally just circling the whole arena. Wow, that flight animation is beautiful. There are some fights that are just natural fits for using a sword and shield. This is not it. This is a natural choice for the bow gun. An enemy that spends a fair amount of time in the air not directly attacking you. Although I honestly would be happy with just a lance even in this situation just to be able to shield a bit better and peg him as he comes in. Where are you, bro? Did he leave the arena already? Wow. Yeah, that's the other thing about fighting the Rathalos. He does this thing where he travels. You'll notice that he just went from uh, 8 to 7, from 7 to 4 without stopping. Uh, in the Monster Hunter Tri version, I want to say, of the game, uh, player base called it the Rathalos World Tour, where randomly he would just get up and just go door to door and kill and, and kill any sense of uh, time. Oh, but he does this. He, uh, he comes and he kills a prey in a different arena, 
and then he'll eat it to restore stamina, and that will leave behind a shiny. So Rathalos shinies are actually very easy to collect. As I mentioned before, his flight doubtlessly costs a lot of stamina to maintain. He does it a lot. As you can see, I wasn't just pontificating for my Tookus, I was coming close to that. Hmm. At least he doesn't have poisoned hind legs. Honestly, this is a better place for me to fight him, because if he lights me on fire with a fireball here, I can stop, drop, and roll once into the water, instead of having to do it like three to five times on the dry ground. Jesus. For example, he just lit me on fire. Instant put out of fire. Fire after that last one. Mega pot. Jesus, that terribly covered me from the leg kick he just delivered. Yeah, after having done a bunch of easy missions in a row, this one is really pushing me through my paces. Alright, screw healing. What I need to do is find an opportunity to take advantage of and take advantage of it. I need to get my momentum back basically. That that lunge he did there where he attacks with his talons can poison. He also has a knockover attack where he uh, knocks you over and then starts eating for stamina. I think that one right there was was that. Being poisoned while pinned can get you killed pretty quickly. Because apart from the massive damage you've doubtlessly taken just being put into that position, you're also unable to cure out of the poison. Okay, he's circling the arena and looking to come in for a chomp. This is not a good time to heal. There he comes! There's the dive to avoid him. Dude, you've been flying virtually non-stop ever since you've been on this screen. I missed completely. And that was it. That was my entire opening to attack him in. I'm gonna farm this guy later on, I'm gonna wanna have better weapons to do it with. Something which has aqua in it, or thunder, or whatever he's vulnerable to. A lot of poisoners on this screen. I thought I had him for a second there, but nope. That's the knockover while I'm on fire? Nope. Gonna need to make a pot out of this at some point. Sweet, gotta heal off. When you forget getting full combos and just focus on getting single slashes in. 
Unless he stays on the ground just a little bit longer. Pretty sure his face is his most vulnerable spot, so when it's available, if it's available, it's obviously my pre preferred target. Yeah, I don't mind being on the wrong screen for a second. Not with him literally gearing up for another dive. Deafening Lord is deafening. Fuck. You know, I keep rolling left, and that results in me pl getting plowed by his legs. I need to r tune my instincts versus the Rathalos to roll between his legs. But I think that there's enough space with that wide stance that I could pull that off. There you go. Talons on Feline, who's gonna be dead shortly. Judging by their lack of health bar. I'm gonna flash bomber two off actually next time we face him. Should have mini sharpened. His face is currently on fire, which I can only interpret as him raging. Still, if he gives me an opportunity to. No, he's definitely raging. Look at the speed with which he's pivoting and re attacking. Him raging is not the time for me to bust a flash bomb. Through the legs. Definitely through the legs. Sailor's a big girl. She knows that that's where she belongs. Fighting position. Perfect. Status. I think I can flash bomb him. Nope. Didn't take him out to the air. Got one more of those to try. His stamina is also pretty low. And he's not paintballed. He is not paintballed. Oh crap. I didn't even get to see which way he went. Let's hope he went back to his uh, old hunting ground in Area 4. That is exactly what he did. In fact, if I'm not much mistaken, he is... Nope, he's not on the hunt. Jesus. I did not bring any stamina restoring items with me. That oversight may yet cost me. Dived too early. There, I had no opportunity to stand back up. Why not try it again? Stun. As much as I want to heal, as much nothing we want to do. Next time he floats, I'm gonna stun him out of the air. I don't know why you bother landing if you're just going to take off again. There, got him. Could not have nailed him better there. Even after he gets up, he's going to remain dazed a little bit longer. Unfortunately, dazed does not reduce his damage capacity, it just 
makes him a little bit less efficient at aiming at me as well. Did I just break his head? Good god, I think I just broke his head. And I didn't paintball him? Oh no, I didn't paintball him. Following the shadow, see which way the shadow goes. That way. Towards area 3. Well, no. Shadow went this way, he's probably heading towards area 2, actually. Incidentally, this is why I bought extra Psycho Serums before this mission started. I anticipated part of the Rathalos World Tour might require me to- Oh! And look at him, because of the amount of stamina he's been using up, he is continuing to focus on replenishing his stamina, which means I will get more shinies. Thousand points worth of Yukoma points and Wyvern, and thousand gold from the Wyvern tiers. Not factoring in the coal, that is a nice bit of cash. Come on, I was shielding. I was fucking shielding. I think I have just enough time to get the fire off before I heal. And if I have a Yukomo egg, now's the time to use it. I don't. Break over. Paintball is on him already. Don't need those. Just need to continue laying in my damage. Did he leave? No, he's right there. He didn't kill another, did he? No, he didn't. Okay. If he did, I would be looking for the shinies. I could differentiate his mini landing with instant takeoff from his actual landing. Like, like that was just a mini landing. If I knew that, I could probably better predict when I needed just to get one slash in and when I needed to open up a full combo. Just a block. Stay. Careful about your positioning. Doing too many sword slashes would move me too far forward, but just enough. Let's stay between his legs. Okay, this annoying off screen thing is really gonna get to me after a bit. I mean, it had some positive effects right there, but still. There! Through the legs. Shield it. And off screen. Come back on screen, instant damage. Can attempt to heal this, I think. He's raging. If he's raging, there's going to be even less opportunity. Also, I am most unfortunately out of stamina at this point. Nope, you're trying to lure me off screen and I'm not falling for it. I'm not going to get in a second hit if I do that. My stamina at this point is going to become the problem. Uh, without having brought any meat with me, unless there's a BBQ spit back in camp that I didn't pick up out of the box, which I already know there isn't, I have no way of cooking meat and increasing my max stamina. So, every minute this fight goes on, it's going to become harder and harder for me to actually block anything or run. Where's the 
Barcaster. I need to get out of here ASAP. <sighs> One tick of health left. And from that to 100%. Well timed uh, use of the Farcaster, especially since I don't have that far to go to get back. Um, let's double check on that meat thing. Nah, there's nothing. Alright, so this is it. Uh, oh, Veggie Elder is the only other way that it might work out. Uh, we're killing felines and taking rations off them if they drop them. I'll check Zone 3 next time I'm there. See if I can't make use of that somehow. Hey, speak of the devil, looks like he's going to Zone 3. But uh, if there are felines, I will pay attention to the shinies they drop. I see no felines. Nope. Not letting you hit me in the face. I'll hit you in the face, though. Seeing felines, just insects. Come on, come on. Can't possibly hit me with those attacks from right there. Oh, back attack and very effective. There it is. Stagger. And I swear it looked like a break animation there though. Okay, that's bull. So he, he gets he, he roars, which stuns me. But then by the time his roar completes, I should be unstunned, right? But I'm not. There's a just enough of a window that if he had pre-positioned correctly, he would be in perfect position to attack me. Okay, fair enough. But then he takes it one step further. He takes a quick step backwards after the roar, which positions himself for pretty much any of his frontal attacks. He hides by the door of the arena. That's a cripple walk, thank god. Pissing me off. Alright. Uh, you know, for all of my complaining about how hard that fight was, and it was pretty challenging. He did uh, basically go down in, not down, but he's gone to the crippled status in about 20 minutes, which is not bad. 20-25 minutes. Uh, let's see, I don't remember if I did the 8-10 mining trip or not. I kind of want to do that. But I can do that on my own uh, later on, and uh, I'm also kind of eager to, to drop this guy. So let's finish the fight. I'm wondering if I'm close enough to the edge from 6 to 7 to do a tail card. Just, you know, getting extra Wrath Mar Marrow early on could prove very useful. Let's see. There's the first two hits on the tail. There's the way to the door. That's me getting out. Wait see what he does. Looks like he's settling right back down. Settles right back down. Go for that tail. Didn't even get to follow up with the second hit of my combo. The good news is I can get out before he roars even. So, that, that's gonna keep this pretty speedy. So I'm gonna feline leave him alone too. He's moving, he's moving. Looks like he's settling down. Looks like he's settled down. That's cool. Yup. You know, if I wait long enough, I could even let him heal between pushes to make sure he doesn't die until his tail comes off. But that is more that work than I'm willing to put forward on this, especially considering my stamina is down to half. Here's my last ration. 
Looks like he's not settling now. Nope, there he goes, limping back to his old position. Nope, he's moving. That looks like settling. Where is your tail, bro? Well, at least we want to hit on him. You stupid little mini cats, get back where I need ya. Nope! That little step may have cost me. Depending on how quickly he goes from firing fireballs to. Yup, look at him, he's moving around. And I lost the paintball on him. Hmm, gonna need to paintball him again if I'm gonna keep this up. Which will probably let him get a free roar off. Still, the triple damage leap strike on uh, his tail. Or double damage, or whatever. The extra damage leap strike is definitely a lot of damage to be using to cut his tail off with. Stupid feline, just get off that screen and let him go back to sleep. I have absolutely no doubt this fight would have gone a little bit faster if I hadn't insisted on getting this tail. But I do insist, uh, because I know that Wrath Mirror becomes one of those things that's a pain in the neck to collect otherwise. Or, you know, Rathalos tail. Depending on what you get out of it. Last of the felines. Going back to sleep. Clearly class and condition classic conditioning does not work on these monsters. You know, I need to look for more sophisticated recording programs so that I can, like, pause recording and unpause recording more easily. That way I could just pause this so that you guys didn't have to watch if you didn't want to, and then just be like, and I basically did that five more times, and then one up. Or, you know, speed up the display, yakety sack style. Okay, he's back in position now. Got it! Tails off. And that gave me a Rothalos tail, plus the credit for breaking the damn thing, which is gonna be an extra carve, or extra quest reward. Plus the crazy lucky cat, or lucky cat, whatever it's called, upgrade, which is, again, more quest rewards. With all the sleep damage I've gotten in on him, he can't possibly have that much health left. Of course, he's enraged, and he doesn't really need that much health, just enough to make my life a living hell. So, without his tail, a lot of his moves are going to be less terrifying than they were before. That was a bad time jumped on my part, and I got lucky that he was out of position.
They should go down. Okay, he's going to a different arena. Probably to restore stamina. But really, just to piss me the fuck off. I'm gonna boost the speed. Yeah, this fight, this fight right here is uh, one of the longer ones I've had to do so far. Um, and this is the kind of fight that when you have to do on uh, five star, six star difficulty with uh, online LHP boosting, it becomes even harder. Apparently, I also missed the shiny drop when he killed that guy because it took so long to get here. Bug nets. One, two. Temporary drop, instant. There, nope. Come on, you don't have a tail. That shouldn't hurt. Fuck. Well, he's dead anyway. You're as dead as you can be while still standing. <sighs> but you are a Rothalos, and that means I have to go find you again. Where are you going this time, huh? Probably back to six to sleep, right? Right. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be giving the uh, go to eight ten and dig uh, and mine a pass this time, since I spent so damn long on the bloody tail. I should have waited for you to actually go to sleep, just so I could open with one of those. You want me to walk after you, just so you can rush back this way? Why don't you just charge me now? There it is. One jump strike. <laughs> he dies on top of his bloody tail. How very appropriate. So I've been asked, uh, uh, and again, much appreciated by the way, I love getting questions, comments, posts, etc. and favorites, especially when I'm doing these, uh, non-typical games on my channel. It's always nice to have that support. But I got asked, uh, does it matter where you carve from? The answer is no. Uh, it doesn't matter where you physically are standing when you uh, hit the carve button. Uh, you have equal chance of getting whatever is on the drop table. Uh, the drop table, though, is weighted for each monster. So, some things like scale or uh, carpus are typically going to have a much better drop rate than something like uh, claw or something even more oddball, like their shocker. And then there's some drops that only happen under certain conditions, like if you break the uh, tail, I think there's an 80% chance of the tail and 20% chance of mirror or something like that. Uh, we'll see what we got. Wrath Webbing was for the head. Wrath Talon is for his... I don't know what I got Wrath Talon for, honestly. Whatevs. A bunch of stuff that was mined during the course of the uh, mission. And, uh, ho ho ho, that's a thousand three hundred cennies and, uh, Lukoma points. King and queen are both slain. Excellent. That was a fun fight. That was a bit frustrating, but overall a fun fight. Now, upgrading to the Chock Chock Plus would require a Diablo Sparrow, which I don't have. And would only marginally boost the efficacy. No, it would massively boost the efficacy. I could jump this to a 185 attack with a 10% affinity. That's that's pretty significant. Compare that to weapon crafting. Triukomo Saber, which is 175 with no affinity, but a really big go or green. Or having to fight the Zenobra repeatedly to farm the 175 with thunder damage. Be a nice touch too. 
So all these are viable options. Uh, for the time being, however, these are options that I will ponder over another time. Uh, I hope you all have as much fun as I did with this, uh, this particular quest. Well, no, I hope you had a little bit more fun. I did get frustrated more than once by his... Oh, with this, I landed. Oh, I'm not landing anymore. I'm flying. But hey, no deaths, Rathalos skill. Any landing you can walk away from, right? And he couldn't walk away from this landing, so even better for me. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time.